a few months ago, I made a video about TrueNAS Scale and TrueNAS Core. You know, just like a little presentation, say this is what TrueNAS Scale does, this is what TrueNAS Core does. Uh, since then, I've used both. And I've learned a lot about how they work and kind of the internal tuning. And while they have the same interface, they work substantially different. And if you look on here, you can look in this little tiny text and see that I'm running TrueNAS Core right now. Uh, this was not the plan. Uh, I'm a huge Linux guy. Uh, I dabble in FreeBSD. Uh, FreeBSD is very interesting to me, um, but it's not super practical to my job. Um, as a cloud engineer, I'm using Linux all the time, everywhere. Um, and so I just didn't have the motivation to figure out jails versus, you know, I already use Docker and Docker works great and I'm learning Kubernetes. I don't want to deal with jails. That, that was my big thing. Uh, I also believe FreeBSD, in terms of networking, kind of has its own issues it needs to work on. Um, and that just comes with low adoption rate, but with things like um, PFSense, which I'm now running. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested in the video on that. Um, and TrueNAS, uh, it is getting adoption. And you're kind of starting to find really good use cases for these things. So I think the, the big question here is why am I using TrueNAS Core and not TrueNAS Scale? And there's a lot of reasons. Uh, number one, I'm only running one server, so the idea of needing to scale out, not a huge deal to me, right? I'm home labber, I'm not going to be running a ton of virtual machines on these things, I don't need a cluster of them to like delegate responsibility, I don't need uh, ridiculous amounts of storage. You know, I'm running uh, like 20 terabytes right now, which is a lot, but you can do a lot more scale, right? Especially when you're scaling out versus scaling up. Um, the big thing for me though was plugins. So I'm running a few things right now. I've got something called GitT, uh, TrueSync, which is just a sync thing. And then if we switched over to my primary, you're gonna see I also have another instance of sync thing. So these are awesome for me. Um, I use these with a lot of my servers. Um, I've done a lot of research on the, you know, the tooling and what I like and what I don't like about of different solutions for data backup. And this is a really good one for me. I really like how it works. Um, it's very simple. Uh, you set an application up on the client and on the server, and they can talk to each other and kind of find each other very easily. And I back up about six terabytes worth of data um, using sync thing. And then I also have another instance, which I'm kind of working on right now, getting some permissions going, but I'm writing it as a Docker container on my Docker server to back up all of my persistent volumes. Um, Sounds very simple. Sounds like you know I could very easily throw this up on Docker because I'm already writing it in Docker for one of my other servers, and we're off to the races. It's not that not quite that easy. Um, so you're using Kubernetes and Helm through an abstraction layer on TrueNAS Scale, and it really complicates Docker, which is supposed to be this super easy tool to kind of build and deploy things. Um, and you know you can get to those abstractions where you're using Kubernetes, but for a lot of home labbers, it's not necessary unless that's something you're specifically interested in learning. Um, and then throwing uh, Helm on top of it really complicates it because it restricts a great deal of ports. And sync thing is supposed to listen on certain ports and it's supposed to have web interfaces on other ports. And it has like three or four different ports. It's using both TCP and UDP. And could I have gotten it to work? Yes, but it would have been a hacky solution and it just wouldn't have solved my problems very well. So I switched over to TrueNAS Core, uh, and it's been going great. Like truly, this this machine has been rock solid. Um, setup, you know, there's a little bit of uh, configuration that I'm still learning because I'm not, you know, a Jails user. I'm not a big guy when it comes to, um, you know, doing the networking inside of Jails. It's uh, it's very different in a lot of ways. Uh, it's something I'm still learning a lot of. So you'll see this one's hanging off like 10.0.0.35, or if we switch. Oh, there we go. Uh, we're hanging these, which uh, 10.0.0.35 is actually what this is running on right now. Um, but we're running this one on 85 and running this one on 40. So it actually gives me a little bit more configuration I can do. And this is something you can do in Docker and some other stuff. But they made it dead simple easy, which is really nice. Um, and I really like just how well refined TrueNAS Core is. And that's something you likely know going into TrueNAS Scale. They say, hey, Careful before you download this. It is still beta software. We're still running through the kinks. Um, and I was willing to give it a shot. Um, and I'm definitely not telling people not to run it, but 
I do think that what's going on in TrueNAS Core is great for the average home library, especially if you don't have a ton of you know Linuxy or BSD experience. Um, their web interfaces are great. Um, it's really the primary reason I'm using them. Um, last time I talked about my uh, NAS server, uh, it was running on OpenSUSE, and my big problem was is I didn't really have this dashboard. So I'm not gonna custom write a dashboard like this. I'm a backend dev, right? I'm a systems dev. Um, but what's really great here is it does a lot of the heavy lifting for me. So the biggest thing here is it'll show my disks when they have errors. Um, it gives me really just a simple clean interface to manage them and to set how many you know, pools I wanna do and it lets me do uh, migrations a lot easier. There's a lot of stuff that I just don't want to worry about killing my data. This is data I've worked really hard on. There's thousands of dollars of data that I'm storing, um, not to mention thousands and thousands of hours worth of processing. A lot of it's video footage. So this video footage um, took me hours and hours to render, and I don't want to lose that. That would be huge, and uh, my Plex server would probably never recover. So having just a little bit more security in my system was really important to me. And that's a big reason I'm using TrueNAS Core. Um, again, you can run this your own way, however you want. Um, but I've just been really impressed. And you, can, you know, you can go into storage. And we can look at our pools, and you can get some more fine-grained information um, about, you know, compression ratios and stuff like that. So we're not doing great on this one. Um, and that's just because of how sync thing works. But we can get into uh, this. We can really look at like actual disks, and we can kind of see how they're doing. Um, so we can do manual tests. We can set tests to you know work as scripts and run at certain times and cron jobs um, and it's it's really beneficial and there's definitely some Phoenix with TrueNAS core that I don't like but those often follow through on TrueNAS scale as well and what they do right they do really well um, again I think this is really great for someone who just kind of wants to run something but doesn't want to learn all the details behind it that's totally okay I like to know the stuff behind it but that's not for everyone and then it is also great for someone who does understand those things, but understands their limitations, right? So TrueNAS scale, um, I, th I think it's just has a lot of kinks and I really think it's designed for enterprise users where you're going to have a subject matter expert whose entire job is to control those plugins. Um, or you might even have entire teams designing and managing plugins. Um, and I just don't think it's as accessible to the average user um, and again, a lot of those plugins aren't there and there's weird scripts you have to run and that's all fine and good. But when it comes down to it, this is the most important server I run and it's probably gonna be the most important server you run. And I'd rather things just not go wrong, right? So, uh, I've been on both sides. I've used TrueNAS Scale, TrueNAS Core. I've rolled my own, haven't done anything like with Windows or uh, Open Media Vault, but, uh, this is a great solution for me. Um, just kind of wanted to update you guys on why TrueNAS Core, why I switched, and um, if it's something you should consider. And if you're looking at a NAS, uh, what software you wanna use. This is more of a real world, world perspective. I'll uh, throw a card up here or here, uh, looking more of the academic understanding behind it. Um, but yeah, give TrueNAS Core a go if you're thinking about running a NAS. Um, and if you, you wanna be adventurous and you wanna try things out, give Scale a shot as well. Um, just do know it is still beta software, um, and it's, it's, it's got a lot of kinks to work out, and then there's going to be a lot of just additional learning and knowledge you have to do that is TrueNAS specific. So hopefully you guys learned something. Just kind of wanted to show off TrueNAS Core, why I'm using it, what I'm using it for, and why I prefer it over the other solutions. So hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day, and uh, hopefully you learned something. Thanks.